the entire trip, we're pulling around mm. a cargo trailer, the entire trip. So all the Iowa dirt roads, back roads, we're dragging around our trade show, show booth, all of our B-level camera roads. gear, all of our inventory, everything's in the back of this trailer. So we go in, have a good meal, gas station, chicken fingers, cheeseburgers. Scott comes out of the bathroom, we finish eating. Total of 15 minutes. Yeah, easily 15 minutes. So like, okay, well, let's go back. Let's start walking again. We're all fueled up. All of us just get in the truck and we drive to spot number two, which is a mile from the gas station, two or three miles from the gas station. We go to pull some cameras out of the trailer and the trailer door is open and our trade show TVs are hanging out of the trailer. My suitcase was in front of the TVs. I'll let you explain what happens next. So we go from Cameron's luggage missing to Jake saying, oh, my suitcase is there too. And then back to Cameron saying, Where's the Pelican case? Which had an NX-80, it had a drone, had a GoPro. And then at that point, I'm like, oh crap, back on the main road. When I looked in my mirror, I saw something black on the side of the road. I was like, oh, there's a tire. That's the first thing that popped in my mind. There's a tire sitting on the side of the road. But go back to the trailer, we're missing- A bunch of black things. <laughs> two suitcases, a Pelican box, a bag with all of our podcast equipment. And I'm like, that's it. It's a mile up the road. So we hurry up, jump back in the truck, and go back up there. It's gone. Nothing there. We're missing two suitcases, a Pelican box, and a Carhartt tool bag full of our podcast stuff. All of the content from the entire trip is not backed up, and it's all on the SD cards in the cameras that are in the Pelican case. Total so every, panic mode. Everything from the trip, like Whitetail Cribs with Bill Winky once in a lifetime. Yes. That podcast it- once in a lifetime. Like everything from the trip is gone. Podcast equipment, gone. Everything's gone. $7,000 worth of stuff. Lights, camera. Follow the trail. Ready to shoot. If you know where a deer's bedding and you know where he's eating, that deer should be dead. Camera. If you're passive on a deer, what you're doing is you're teaching. I've got 30 bucks in the Michigan record book. Everyone but one has had at least one previous wound on his body. Some had as many as four. <laughs> trail cam radio from the guys at Exodus. All right, we're live remotely. We were just together. We just spent a week together, but here we are back to doing things remotely. And uh, it's after one of my favorite trips of the year, Iowa. And it's March. It's March 10th right now. Iowa. What'd you guys think? I think uh, I think it was a good trip, but I think uh, a good starting spot for this is to explain why we're remote and why we weren't able to do this when we were together. Yeah. So the uh, I'm not the best storyteller, so I'll tee it up for someone else. But the long and short of it is we wrapped up a day with Bill Winky, and then we went. We were planning on spending about a day and a half scouting or two. Uh, yeah, day and a half scouting. I'll take it. Uh, I'll, I'll pass the baton from here. Oh, come on. Come on. I think yeah, we have to go in chronological order. So we drove out. Cameron drove out on Tuesday, picked Jake up Tuesday. You guys spent Wednesday, Thursday recording content with uh, Scott Buckley. Was it Scott? No, you weren't with Scott. Yeah, you were with Scott. Emmett and Scott doing some shed hunting stuff, some scouting stuff. Friday, you drove over to Des Moines, set up for the show. I flew in on Saturday. We finished a show out Saturday and Sunday. Monday, we drive over to Bill's, Bill Winky. So we record a podcast, we record a Whitetail Cribs. Tuesday, we venture over to, well, Monday night, we scouted some public. Tuesday morning, we kicked the day off with, with Scott Buckley on a different section of public, different area of Iowa. And that's where it really starts to get kind of interesting. So Tuesday, last day we're even supposed to be in Iowa. So all of the content that we have shot is done yeah. up until this point. So yeah. we're doing a little project on public land, hanging a bunch of cameras, and we're getting ready to go to spot number two. And we're like, okay, we've walked six miles on the first piece. Let's go grab some lunch and we'll hit piece number two. Scott um, is pretty familiar with the area, so he's going to drive around and show us some new places to hit and there was a piece that he was like really really excited to get to and he's like man you guys really got to see this it's exciting but i gotta go to the bathroom so we got to go to a gas station get some food so we go to the gas station bp get some food we forgot the premise the entire trip we're pulling around Mm. a cargo trailer the entire trip so all the iowa dirt roads back roads we're dragging around our trade show show booth all of our camera gear all of our inventory everything's in the back of this trailer so proceed. So we go in, have a good meal, gas station, chicken fingers, cheeseburgers. Scott comes out of the bathroom, we finish eating. I'm like, all right, well, let's go. Total of 15 minutes. Yeah, easily 15 minutes. So, like, okay, well, let's go back to, uh, let's start walking again. We're all fueled up. 
Scott has his dog in the truck. So we're like, we got to get back out there, uh, make sure the dog's okay. All of us just get in the truck and we drive to spot number two, which is a mile from the gas station. Uh, two or three miles probably. Yeah. Two two or three miles from the gas station. Get out. We're all excited because Scott has premised this with like, this is the spot. Yeah. One of those, like, I haven't been here in 10 years, but it was absolutely tore up. It was insane. And let's go check it out type, type situation. Like this is the holy grail of spots he hasn't visited in a long time. Yeah. So we go to pull some cameras out of the trailer and the trailer door is open and our trade show TVs are hanging out of the trailer. And Jake's like, oh crap, the TVs are hanging out of the trailer. (laughs) And my first thought was, well, my suitcase was in front of the TVs. So whatever was in front of the TVs is no longer in the trailer. I'll let, I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you explain what happens next. So we go from Cameron's luggage missing to Jake saying, Oh, my suitcase is there too. And then back to Cameron saying, where's the Pelican case? Which had an NX-80, it had a drone, had a GoPro. And then at that point, I'm like, oh crap. Back on the main road, when I turn my turn signal on, I looked in my mirrors. I always check my mirrors like when I'm turning, especially when I'm pulling a trailer and make sure no one's going to come on behind me and just, you know, rear end me. So when I looked in my mirror, I saw something black on the side of the road. A tire. But I knew it wasn't, we, we went that way to the gas station and I knew there was nothing there on the way to the gas station, for certain. But when I saw it turning, I was like, oh, there's a tire. That's the first thing that popped to my mind. There's a tire sitting on the side of the road. But go back to the trailer, we're missing- A bunch of black things. <laughs> two suitcases, a Pelican box, a bag with all of our podcast equipment. And I'm like, that's it. It's a mile up the road. So we hurry up, jump back in the truck, go back up there. It's gone, it's nothing there. So then- we continue, well, at this point, we're missing shoes, we're missing two suitcases, a Pelican box, and a Carhartt tool bag full of our podcast stuff. And at this point, we realize that <laughs> all of the content from the entire trip is not backed up, and it's all on the SD cards in the cameras that are in the Pelican case. Total so every, panic mode. Everything from the trip, uh, like White Tail Cribs with Bill Winky, once in a lifetime. Yes. That podcast, it- once in a lifetime. Like, everything from the trip is gone. Podcast equipment gone everything's gone seven thousand dollars worth of stuff easily and it's like chad's can like chad's like there's no possible way that the trailer can come open there's two different latch there's two different mechanisms that have to be opened for the door to physically pop open at the same time previously in the trip we're driving down the highway someone (laughs) that (laughs) was me that one was me Yeah, but it's like, so we're like thinking back and forth, but previously in the trip, someone drives up behind us and tells us our U-Haul's open. So the door's open, our stuff's hanging out. Luckily, nothing fell out at that point, but now we're like, okay. Somebody forgot to close the door. Yeah, so the door was not locked. like the. And we drove two hours with it open from Des Moines. We drove two hours. And nothing nothing fell fell out. out. Now we're like, okay, everything's gone. So you guys tell us what happened. Did someone steal it? Did it fall out of the trailer and the trailer came open again? I mean, we're on some bumpy back roads, dirt roads. I don't know. We all have different varying opinions. Anyway, the story gets even better because we're in a small town in Iowa. I joined the buy, sell, and trade group in that town thinking if someone stole it, they're going to list it for sale. And I'm going to see, okay, there's our stuff, blah, blah, blah. I call the sheriff's office, Tell them what happened. I don't even know if we put two and two together thinking like, okay, it was stolen. We didn't have any idea, but we're like, let's cover our bases here. I wake up the following morning to a Facebook message from a lady. She was from that town that I've just joined the buy, sell, trade group. My first thought was like, oh, this is someone like welcoming me to that group. And they're like, hey, thanks for joining. I read the message and it says, I know this is a long shot, (laughs) but did you lose any luggage on highway bleep in Iowa? And I was like, "Whoa!" It, as a matter of fact, we did. <laughs> and so she like asked me to describe the contents and she had everything except for my shoes. My shoes are missing. And a so GoPro. She sends me a and picture. And a GoPro. We didn't know that at this point. She sends me a picture of the Pelican case, the podcast equipment, my luggage and Jake's luggage. And we're like, oh my God, everything is here. So it's still up in the air. <laughs> what happened? Um, did they get cold feet? <laughs> Did they think like the stuff wasn't worth anything? I, this, I don't know. This is, this is my theory. 
They they opened up that SD card and saw the Bill Winkie interview and just said, the world has to see this. I don't care what it is. This is priceless. <laughs> they have to see this. I've been waiting for a new Bill Winkie interview. He hasn't done a lot of them lately. This is what needs to happen. Regardless of what happened, who cares? But I'm just so happy and thankful that the damage wasn't as bad as uh, what it could have been. Uh, and beyond just, I mean, we're all busy. And to be out of the office... It is a hellstorm when you come back to not only lose a week in the office and productivity, then to lose all the work we did on that week. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah we were sweating. <laughs> we yeah. were sweating. Yeah. But outside of that, the trip was good. Yeah. Like that put a pretty sour taste to the ending of the trip. It did. Everybody was pissed off. Yeah. And it kind oh, yeah. of ruined, like we didn't go walk that extra piece. Needless to say, we were not in the mood to go walk any more ground. We didn't get all the cameras hung that we wanted to get hung. We just kind of left with like, man, everything that we did is gone and ruined. So we never really got to like think back and think of all the good stuff that happened right. from the trip, all of the positive things. So um, anyways, hindsight trip was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not all parts of Iowa are created equal. We all know that about our home states, but there's still that allure towards Iowa where you're like, you're in the Mecca. The Mecca is not always the entire state, I guess, well, is what I'm trying to say. So it, we walk some pieces that were not very good at all. Yeah. And then we walk some pieces that were really, really good. Yeah. I think it's, it's kind of misleading and with a variety of the information out there. I mean, the good areas are obviously pretty easy to decipher based off of any sort of data that you pull. But you also have all these people like, man, these underrated zones, man, they're they're real great. They're well, you know, really underrated. I mean, some of the signs we saw was pretty solid, but when people are teened up that in that way, I, I think they're exaggerating or they're saying stay the heck away from the good spots because they're already getting more attention. That's that's my hot take because it just I don't know. I think you could go to a lot of states and get into the sign that we did for the, those two days. Well, the first spot that you and I walked with Emmett, that first farm, yeah. and then the um, the eighty acre farm that we found all the sheds on. We didn't. You're not going to come across sign like that anywhere else in the world. Now that eighty, I've walked a lot of a variety of farms and some really good ones. I mean, that's by far that eighty was the best deer parcel I think I've ever stepped foot on for an eighty. And then you leave that and go to Scott Buckley's farm. <laughs> Which is also like, top tier caliber. Yeah, like one of the best neighborhoods in Iowa. Then you go from there to a zone that you can draw quicker and you walk the public and you're like, well, we're in Iowa and we're going to find this, 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 and this. And we're looking on a map like, oh, this looks pretty good. Let's go walk this. The first day after we were with Bill, we walked um, just one piece, two pieces. I think we were at three or four pieces. Oh, yeah. But we couldn't. Because of the water situation, we couldn't get exactly where we wanted to go. Yeah. There were some other issues, but... We only hung one camera. We hung one camera in uh, six hours, an entire afternoon. We left, uh, you know, Bills went to the hotel, changed clothes, went out until dark, basically. Yeah. So hung one camera. Found one spot that was... And it was probably not even that good of a spot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I put it up there. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do I, think it was... I think it's a good spot. I think we'll know what deer in, on that parcel... I, I do think that. That licking branch was hit five years in a row. Yes. And it's on the like edge of the a, cover, furthest away from the parking lot. Diversity, everything meets there. So, I mean, but then the other scrape we found on whatever, the last day with that oak tree when we found that stand, I was like, that's that's what you want. I mean, that's what you scout a lot for. If you can find three of those in an off season, I feel like you'd be sitting pretty good. Yeah, that was the that second day we found the best, like what you're looking for. And we found that a couple times. The first camera that you hung, mm -hmm. that was a, a lone tree in the middle of an opening that every single licking branch or every overhanging branch had a licking branch under it. It was scraped on that night, yep. and it's March 9th. Yep. Um, and then the next spot, we continue down the river, and you find like this is what you're looking for. And you look up in a tree and the guy has a tree stand there like hunting that scrape. So yeah. he had found it a little bit earlier, but I was talking to Chad on the way home. And when you're on Iowa public ground, you're faced with the decision of, was that a non-resident that hung that stand last year and he's not coming back because he can't draw again? Or he was like, I'm just going to leave this here because it's a good spot. And when I draw again, I'm going to come hunt it. Because it was kind of, I mean, it was kind of a heavy looking tree stand. I bet the it was a local. Were, yeah. Well, it's okay. like, it, it, could e it could be either one. You're faced, anytime you find a tree stand there, you're faced with that decision. It very well could be a local, but you're like, okay, if it's not a local, if it's a non-resident, what are they going to come hunt this? Because it's a good spot. Are they going to start their vacation November 1st? And they're like, okay, well, I can get in here October 26th. Mm -hmm. And when those scrapes are hot, that was a scrape week scrape if there's ever been one. Yeah, for sure. That, yeah, if, if that doesn't 
you know, at least get the hair on your back a little bit, don't listen to this podcast because that's that's the scrape week scrape of all scrapes. And walking up to that, I made a comment to Scott and I said, there's got to be some scrapes underneath that because we're in a, a a junk timber area where it's like all these different transitions along a, a creek. And then here's the lone oak among hackberry, uh, some walnut, which isn't a junk tree, but a, just a variety of non-traditional scraping trees. And like, here's this perfect one on the edge of it. And it was scraped on, it was scraped on all directions. Yeah. So that, that was, that was the best spot that we found Mm -hmm. in the, in the 30. Well, Jake and I walked 36 miles, found a lot better stuff South, but in the, um, less desirable areas, that is easily the best spot we found. Weren't able to hang a camera there because there was a tree stand there. So we we don't know when that guy's going to be back in there. Didn't want to hang the camera. The two spots that we found to hang a camera, there was nowhere to hang a camera. As far as getting them on a physical tree, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're pretty limited in, in some of those spots. Yep. It was kind of difficult to, yep. like, you walk in, you're like, this would be a perfect place for a camera. Then you, you don't, you're not going to go into a piece of public ground and put a stick and pick in the ground and say, here. Like, yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's a free camera. Go ahead and have it <laughs> type deal. Yeah. So we, the closest we could get to the first one was 50 feet, which was okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that set was doable. And I think that the, the second, the big scrape that we found later on in the day, there's a set there to be hung. Just um, not in March. Just yeah, not in just March. not in March. Exactly. You have yeah. to get creative with it. Yeah, I'll be curious. To, I mean, I think that scrape you're gonna you're gonna know what bucks are calling that place home within a half mile. I think leading up to the season. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we all have Iowa points in our hand, Jake. After that trip, what are you doing? Uh, I'm for sure going for for the high draw zone. I mean, after. It's like a triangulation of information. Obviously, I've been asking a ton of people. I haven't going into this trip. I was honestly not really sold on anything. I had an idea what I wanted to do or what I thought I would would do, but after all of this and having multiple people and resources say like, "You need to be here. You need to be here. You need to be here," and they all spoke extremely highly of a certain outfit or an area. I have so much conviction going in this plan now, whereas before I had some serious paralysis by analysis because I've been waiting four years going in year number five. And uh, that's a lot of time, man. It's just to, to go in on a hope and a prayer. You can't do it. So um, my plan is to go to, to, to the, the promised land, the good zone, and I'll probably go back and hang some cameras on some public in that area as a backup plan. And uh, just excited to go back. How about you guys? I'm drawing early, baby. I'm cutting it short. <laughs> if I'm this doesn't short. illustrate stubbornness, I don't know what does. That's all I have to say. <laughs> well, I've committed verbally. I've committed, you know, to hunting uh, with one of our customers. And even though, like, never shook hands, never traded any money or anything, uh, I still gave the guy my word I would do it. So I'm sticking with that. But then also looking at the opportunities – uh, on the public, on the public ground in that zone, man, I really think you'll have an opportunity at a 150 plus deer there. Now you might have to work a little bit harder for it, but, uh, I, I mean, we'll see what the cameras say. We'll go back in August and, and put some more cameras up. But, uh, I mean, I, again, I mean, it can happen anywhere on any type of deer. So I feel okay with it. So that's where I am. What about you, Cameron? Well, my my plans changed pretty drastically on the way home. So my initial plan was I have zero points for Kansas. I have two points for Iowa. Buy an Iowa point. Try to draw Kansas with no points. The dilemma is if I don't apply for or if I don't get Kansas, I'm not going to know until after I could have drawn Iowa. I should draw Iowa this year in the zone that I want to hunt. I should draw it. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hunt Iowa. I'm going to draw the same zone that you're going to. We can attack that public together, and then I'm going to buy a point for Kansas, and then next year I'll be 100% able to draw Kansas. So they just kind of flip-flopped a little bit. I wanted to have the uh, trail camera data for a year in that spot in Iowa before I hunted it. But I think think the – I mean, I've been waiting – I feel like I've been, you guys have been waiting way longer than I have to hunt Iowa, but I feel like I have been waiting my entire life <laughs> for this <laughs> opportunity, and I can't wait any. I just can't wait any longer. Yeah. And I that we found that piece that's going to lay out really well for how I like to hunt, and what we're able to do there is going to be pretty unique. So 
I'm really looking forward to that. My, yeah, my plan's like 180, but hopefully a trip in uh, late October around a cold front, pay attention to the weather and go try to capitalize on some of those scrapes and then uh, let the locals and non-residents have it first week in November and then go back out on the second week in November. And I do have access to some private in that area too. So if the local is being pressured more than we anticipate, then I can hop onto that private. But we walked 36 miles in Iowa on public, on private, and I think I can count four or five tree stands in the entire ground that we covered so i don't anticipate pressure being too too deep like it's not going to be like here and if we can work around it here we can work around it there so there's a lot of room there's a lot of ground but yeah my my plans have drastically changed and i'm pumped because i'm this is the year i'm finally going to get to hunt iowa so a year uh, early yeah a year early it's like i yeah i don't know i'm very excited though but the way the points work out i should draw it like I would definitely draw it next year. Next year you'd be next year you'd be guaranteed. So last night when we were driving home, we had all the draw odds up, went through mathematically where it made the most sense, where you had, you know, where you were most likely to draw and that's That's what it led to. Yeah. So I would be a hundred percent in both states next year. Yeah. But it's like you gotta draw one or the other. You can't do, you can't both, do both the way the applications line out. Well even if you did draw both, that's a lot of that's, that's some a lot of honey. You're spreading yourself <laughs> pretty working. thin. Yeah, you're spreading yourself pretty thin with time, um, being able to get to both places, and it's just going to work out better. And then I'm going to be on the same point rotation as you. It'll be more beneficial to do it that way. So that's where I'm at. I'm hunting Iowa this year, hopefully. Knock on wood, yeah. If I don't draw Iowa, I'm going to have a point then for you're, Kansas. You're really going to be screwed. Yeah. You're gonna if I don't draw this year, I'm not going to be drawn for Kansas – and then I'm probably going to go to Oklahoma or something. Say, yeah, then you're going to wait for a better zone in Iowa. <laughs> that's, yeah, the con- that's the to. conundrum. It's so dynamic uh, with, with all the different draws. Yeah, but the, the zone that we were in, that I could potentially hunt that twice for every one time you could hunt zone the, the – Primo, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Iowa, here we come. 